A strategic plan to ensure Liat's survival is in the works. Our top story in Caribbean news line for Thursday, April 25. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Ricardo Roberts. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. The Antigua and Barbuda government said Thursday it has developed a strategic approach to ensure the survival of regional carrier Liat, and it will be discussed at the meeting of the airline's shareholders and directors in Barbados next week. Prime Minister Gaston Brown said on his official Facebook page that Cabinet had discussed the upcoming meeting and reiterated the importance of the carrier to regional integration and connecting people, goods and services. He said Cabinet pledged to resist any collapse of Liat and any move to replace it. The Antiguan leader said his administration was especially interested in saving the jobs of, est of an estimated 700 workers. Antigua and Barbuda is one of four shareholder governments of the airline. The others are Barbados, Dominica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Next Tuesday's shareholder talks come amidst concerns of worsening money problems for the Antigua-based airline that could lead to it being grounded. Earlier this month, St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said that the regional carrier may be forced to close its operations after governments appeared reluctant to provide the necessary cash injection needed to keep the airline flying. He said that only Grenada has responded positively to the call for 5.4 million US dollars to help the Liat deal with its financial problems. Meantime, Liat's Pilot Association says it's not surprised over reports that Liat could face closure. Leeward Islands Airline Pilots Association President Captain Carl Berg says the association had been left in the dark after sending two letters to management. He said, quote, the staff came forward and we collectively made an offer to the company, but we did not hear or get a response from the shareholders apart from the memo which was sent to the staff from the management indicating that we had a shortfall and the response to the minimum route guarantee, end quote. Now, Berg said the problem with Liat has existed from the start, but was being compounded as the company tried to spread 10 aircraft across 16 destinations. Pilots, along with other workers at the Antigua-based airline, recently agreed to take a 6% cut in wages to help keep the carrier in the air. The major shareholder government, Barbados, has also approached the European Investment for assistance to save the company. British Virgin Islands Premier Andrew Fahey says he has been receiving death threats since his Virgin Islands party won general elections in February. Now speaking in the House of Assembly on Thursday, he said there have been three major threats to his life and that the matter is now classified as a national security issue. Now Fahey said Commissioner of Police Michael Matthews is aware of the threats and he said he was advised by the local police to get bodyguards in a message directed to persons he described as the three entities behind the threat, Fahey said, quote, I will not be intimidated by you. You will not frighten me, end quote. He further said his bodyguards have been advised to use lethal force against any would-be attackers. Now, the Premier says even before being elected, there had been prophecies from religious leaders that he would lead the territory and that came to pass. He said the death threats to his life have also been prophesied and he was not going to take the threats lightly. The Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard on Thursday said it was engaged in a search and rescue mission after a Venezuelan vessel sank on its way to the Twin Island Republic. It said four people were rescued and 21 people remain unaccounted for. The Coast Guard confirmed that it had received a report at 11.40 p.m. Wednesday that the Pirog had left Venezuela the day before and was reported to have overturned while at sea. 25 people were on board the boat, with the last known position of the vessel being two nautical miles east of Patos Island, an island in the northwestern Gulf of Paria and a part of Venezuela. The Coast Guard said it would continue to work closely with its Venezuelan counterparts to ensure an effective search 
and rescue operation. Meantime, police in Dominica say they have recovered two bodies in waters off the north coast of the island as their investigations continue into the incident at sea last weekend. Earlier this week, they had reported finding the body of one person following a joint search and rescue operation with the Maritime Rescue Coordinating Center in Martinique. The authorities said the latest bodies were recovered on Tuesday and that one has been identified as Anthony Jr. Robin, who had been reported missing by family members after being or going on a fishing expedition last Saturday. The other body has not yet been identified. The police search began following reports that a vessel was in distress near the northeast of the island on Saturday night. A man who was on board the vessel was found last Sunday at the shore of Marigo Bay and taken to a health facility where he was examined and released. Residents of the northeast village of Woodford Hill uh, say the boat was also carrying an unknown number of Haitian nationals. Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines is to sign an agreement establishing the dates and frequency of ship calls to Antigua during the 2019-2020 winter tourism season. A statement issued following the weekly cabinet meeting on Thursday said there would be no reductions in calls from last year. Earlier this month, Carnival Cruise Lines agreed to reverse its 2019-2020 cancellations announced by one of its agents. The cabinet statement said that as a result, the same number of visitors are expected to reach Antigua shores on Carnival's ships during next year's winter season. Belize opposition leader John Briseño is calling on supporters to vote no in the May 8th referendum on whether the country should take its long-standing border dispute with Guatemala to the International Court of Justice. The Belize government announced the new date for the referendum last week, less than a week after the passage of the Belize Territorial Dispute Referendum Bill 2019 in Parliament. But in a letter addressed to the standard bearers of the People's United Party, PUP, Bersenio said they have tried to work with government on a national approach to the Guatemalan dispute and all their efforts have been met with indifference. He said the party is therefore left with no other option but to encourage a no vote. The referendum was not held on April 10th as originally scheduled because the opposition succeeded in obtaining a court injunction blocking the vote. They had asked the High Court to determine the legality of the special agreement signed in 2008 that ended negotiations and cleared the way for the territorial dispute to be taken to the ICG. And coming up, Jamaica's teachers respond to a warning that they will face action if the, beat, if the beat students stay with us. Talking, I'm gonna tell us that she and Ted care. That's a pocket money. Need a money counter for come money. 
I kill music. So you know the real name. Name from the bird paper. Kieran Campbell. Understand? Spanish tone. Man, a time so pen, poor a winter spend. Residing at Angels right now. Understand? Been to school, Green Day Basic School, Christian Primary, then Ozemart Technical High School. You know, from there we decide to say, all right. There is renewed debate over corporal punishment in Jamaican schools. It follows a warning from the Ministry of Education that teachers will face action if they beat children. But President of the Jamaica Teachers Association says while they support the calls to end corporal punishment, there are critical issues they want addressed. More in this TVJ News report. Minister of State in the Education Ministry, Alando Terralong, warning teachers to stop corporal punishment in schools. I do not wish to receive any report come September that there are children who are being beaten and abused in schools because we will treat with it very seriously. We want to ensure that our children are disciplined, but that their very human rights are also respected. Then a response from the Jamaica Teachers Association. As it relates to the minister's assertion that serious action will be taken, I'm not too sure what the minister is referring to. What I do know is that where there are breaches of policies, that is a matter for boards of management of schools to treat with. The debate on corporal punishment in schools has has been lingering for some time, with the Andrew Holness-led administration declaring a zero-tolerance approach. But according to JTA President Dr. Garth Anderson, while the JTA is in support of a ban on corporal punishment in schools, he insisted that the education system itself needs fixing. We are concerned with the flare-up of violence in our schools and the level of indiscipline in our schools. The fact is, from where we stand, a number of our young people are crying out for help. They are acting up in our schools. As a result, Dr. Anderson says the government should focus on upgrading the policies which govern the education system. Still in Jamaica, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF's uh, mission chief to the island, has described a call for the currency to be pegged to the U.S. dollar as highly irresponsible. The call had come from President of the Private Sector's Organization of Jamaica, Howard Mitchell. He complained that there was no confidence in the management of the exchange rate as the local currency depreciated 8% between March and April. TVG's Andrew Leadley reports. I am calling for the Jamaican dollar to be pegged to the U.S. currency. That call made by the president of the private sector organization of Jamaica, Howard Mitchell, last week, as he offered a solution he believes will make it easier to do business in Jamaica by fixing the value of the local currency against the U.S. dollar. However, the International Monetary Fund on Wednesday said doing that is easier said than done. IMF Mission Chief to Jamaica, Dr. Umar Ramakrishnan, calls Mr. Mitchell's suggestion baseless and incomprehensive. Talking about pegging an exchange rate um, without providing the necessary arguments and the necessary framework under which such a framework would work, I think is highly irresponsible. Uh, because, you know, Jamaica has come a long way in uh, adopting a flexible exchange rate. Flexible exchange rate has been in place for decades now. So to, to discuss a fixed exchange rate without discussing, you know, what should go with it, I think is not a right approach. Dr. Ramakrishnan says the country would be exposed to greater risks if the exchange rate was fixed as it was up to the beginning of the 90s. She also noted that the net international reserves currently at over 3 billion U.S. dollars would need to be significantly higher to accommodate a fixed exchange rate. Her representative in Jamaica, Dr. Constant Longkenguana, adds that the economy which is still in recovery mode is not strong enough to sustain a fixed exchange rate. The issue is that you would need a lot of fiscal room, which Jamaica currently doesn't have, because we're still talking about a debt at around 98%, which is very high, and sustaining a peg in that environment would be very, very, very challenging. And this week in Newsline Business, one regional hotelier says the closure of Liat could spell trouble for the tourism industry. The Bahamas worried about the future of its social security, and Jamaica looks to the Chinese for help 
to develop its coffee sector. Here's Marie Claire Williams. Newsline Business is brought to you by Solar Dynamics. Caribbean countries are being warned that there will be dire consequences for the tourism industry if regional carrier Liat falls. That warning follows recent statements from St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, that the closure of Liat was imminent unless the airline received a 5.4 million US dollar cash injection. CEO of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Rudy Grant, says Liat is critical to the region's economy. For many of the Caribbean countries, LIA is responsible for transporting the majority of their visitors. And uh, let me just explain that many of these countries uh, provide support to their international carriers, be it Virgin, British Airways, WestJet, Air Canada, Jet Group. Meanwhile, Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown says his government will not allow Liat to fail as a result of its current financial difficulties. He also gave assurances that Antigua's contribution will be paid. Officials in the Bahamas are examining ways to safeguard social security amid growing concerns that payment of benefits are higher than contributions. Their concerns come on the heels of reports that the cost of Social Security in the U.S. will exceed revenue next year for the first time in 40 years. The minister responsible for the National Insurance Board in Nassau, Brenzel Rowe, says they will need to make critical decisions over the next 10 years to keep the NIB afloat. I don't know that we will ever run out of funding. What I do know is, what I do know is, if, if, if our contributions are not paying uh, um, not being equal to our benefits, only two things could happen. Either we could ask you to increase your, your, your contributions so that we could pay your benefits, or we have to decrease your benefits to become equal to your contributions. Jamaica is seeking 100 million U.S. dollars in grant funding from China to develop its coffee industry. And the Agriculture Minister, Audley Shaw, says government will form similar partnerships to build other industries, including cocoa and pimento. Marie Claire Williams, Newsline Business. Newsline Business was brought to you by Solar Dynamics. When we were building in 1984, we decided to get the solar water heater. We use it up to this morning. From my home, I we get rain two days that we still get uh, our water. I've had it for 30 years and I have no problem with it up to this day. All I can say is that anyone who wish to have a system, try Solar Dynamics. Solar Dynamics water heater systems are now right through the Caribbean. And ahead in sport, Andrew Russell to be used as a batting all-rounder at the upcoming ICC World Cup. Stay with us. Sport is next. Have you ever tried festival? I try oh. to make it at home, it don't come out good. <laughs> <laughs> Flop. Andre Russell will be utilized as a batting all-rounder at the upcoming ICC World Cup in England. And interim head coach Floyd Reefer says there is a plan to manage the players' workload during the six-week tournament. 
The Jamaican is widely regarded as a game changer with his explosive batting and sharp pace bowling. But chronic knee problems in recent years have raised serious doubt about his ability to complete 10 overs in one day internationals. And pointing to Russell's current batting form in the Indian Premier League, Reefer said the 30 year old's batting would be the key for West Indies during the May 30th to July 14th showpiece. In, in the IPL, he's scoring a lot of runs. You know, we'll be using him as a batting all rounder in, in, in the World Cup. You know, he's, he's showing that he has tremendous striking ability. Look at his stats in, in the IPL as well. He's been doing very, very well in, in the IPL. So we're going to use him as a batting all rounder. Obviously, in terms of the games that we play, we've got to manage him as well. We're going to manage his, his, his injuries. In between the games, you know, we have three to four days rest between games, so we've been managing that process as we go on from game to game. Now, Russell last featured in an ODI for West Indies nearly a year ago during Bangladesh's three-match tour of the Caribbean. He lasted uh, just one game before putting, pulling out of the series with a knee injury. Recalled for the last two ODIs against England earlier this year, he failed to play a single game as injury again kept him sidelined. Despite Russell's recent injury troubles, uh, interim chief selector Robert Haynes said he was satisfied the player was fit enough to compete. I spoke with Andrew about four days ago and he assured me that he will be okay for the World Cup. He just has a few niggling injuries, um, one with his wrist and one he was just feeling some pain behind his knee, but he assured me that he will be okay for the, for the World Cup. Still in cricket now, cricket's world governing body, the ICC, has praised the career of Marissa Aguilera following the retirement announcement of the former West Indies women's captain. In a statement, Thursday Chief Executive Manu Sawney hailed her as a global role model while pointing out her successful tenure as skipper. Aguilera has been one of the most renowned women cricketers. Sawney said, quote, her success as captain and player is there for everyone to see and I am sure she would have been a role model for many aspiring cricketers the world over. I congratulate Marissa for a wonderful career and wish her all the best in whatever she pursues in the coming years. End quote. The 33-year-old Aguilera uh, led West Indies to the semi-finals of three T20 World Cups. That's in 2010, 2012 and 2014 and she was a member of the 2016 side which captured the title in India. Uh, wicket keeper, uh, the Trinidadian tallied 1,752 runs in ODIs at an average of 20 while claiming 78 catches and 26 stumps. In T20s, she gathered 768 runs at an average of 14, completing 38 catches and 34 stumpings. Now to football now, Jamaica's Stadium East will play host uh, to next month's CONCACAF Caribbean Champion Club Championships. Haitian sides as uh, Capoeis, that's AS Capoeis and Real Hope FA will clash with Jamaican clubs Portmore United and Waterhouse FC from May 12th to the 19th at the venue located in the capital Kingston. The winner will earn direct qualification for next year's CONCACAF Champions League. The runners-up and third-place finishers will qualify for the 2019 CONCACAF League, while the fourth-place team will take on Caribbean's Club Shield champion Suriname SV Robin Hood in a playoff, to match, playoff match to determine the third club uh, from the Caribbean in the CONCACAF League. Now, the tournament is the second major CONCACAF event set for the country, with the National Stadium also set to host two games in the CONCACAF Gold Cup in June. Switching sports now, Jamaica's young athletes are beaming with pride after bettering their overall medal haul at the just-concluded Carifta Games in the Cayman Islands. TVJ's Jordan Fort tells us more. The young Jamaicans tally of 85 medals, including 36 gold, 33 silver and 16 bronze, topped the 82 medals won last year. World Under-20 double sprint champion Brianna Williams was expectedly the standout at the meet, winning the Austin Seeley Award for the Most Outstanding Athlete for the second year running. The 17-year-old won the 100 and the 200 meters and was part of the winning 4x1 team at the championships. Though rushing to catch her flight to the States, 
Williams gave this reaction. Um, it feels, it's an amazing feeling because I didn't know I was going to win it again, even though I won three times again this year, but I'm just proud of myself. Shaquina Foote was another triple gold medalist at the championships, though she says even she didn't expect it. Well, not really, but um, I know I would win the 400 meter, but I wasn't so sure about the four hurdles, but I pulled through and I won. Also. And no successful team could achieve that success without solid leadership. And the captain, Kai Chang, who himself took home one gold and a bronze, was proud of the team's performance. I am very pleased at how the team did well. Um, based on the performances and the results, it goes to show that Jamaica can overcome adversity, and that saying is really true. Um, the team did bond and stay together well, and we produced, and we got a better middle haul than last year, so we're, I'm very, very happy, very satisfied. Meanwhile, despite concerns over some of the nation's top athletes withdrawing from the championships, coach Marlon Gale says he is not surprised that they were able to rack up that many medals. As I said in previous interviews, I was very comfortable with the team that we had. I think it was well balanced in terms of um, the, the talents that we had. Um, we reminded our team also that we had the best team at the Carifta Games. Um, and out of that came um, 85 medals. And J3A's president, Dr. Warren Blake, agrees. Despite the misgivings about the team, you can see from the performances that the team has done even better than the team last year. They have gotten more medals. The quality has been a little different. They have gotten a few less gold, but far more silver medals than, than the team last year did. And they have gotten 86 medals, 85 medals compared to 82. You know, so which, overall, they have done a very wonderful job. We got two triple gold medal winners. Either of them could have won the Austin Celia Award. We took home the Austin Celia Award again. And we also got two record breakers. And that's the sport. Stay with us. We'll be right back. When we were building in 1984, we decided to get the solar water heater. We use it up to this morning. From my home, I we get rain two days and I still get hot water. I've had it for 30 years and I have no problems with it up to this day. All I can say is that anyone who wish to have a system, try solar dynamics. Solar dynamics, water heater systems are now right through the Caribbean. Again, the major developments of this, the, the Antigua and Barbuda government says it has developed a strategic approach to ensure the survival of regional carrier Liat. And in sport, Andre Larsel to be utilized as a batting all-rounder at the upcoming ICC World Cup. That's Caribbean Newsline for news and sports round the clock. Subscribe to carnanews.com for more of our programming. Log on to caribvision.tv and check out our YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow. But from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching. Have yourselves a good night.